incident management. Now, what I mean by incident management is that we're going to go through and think a little bit outside the box here. We need to come up with some processes to help us to, one, identify issues that could be taking place. After we identify those, we need to then analyze what exactly happened here. We then need to go through and prioritize different types of issues that could be taking place or security incidences, because some may be more important than others, or some may have bigger ramifications. And then finally, we need to make sure that we come up with some type of way to resolve those issues. Now, part of incident management requires us to come up with the why. So part of figuring out your incident management procedures is coming up with the why. Why do we do incident management? Well, first of all, it needs to meet availability requirements. It also needs to help us reduce impact of that incident that's taking place. We're going to also provide better quality of service or better service quality to our users as well as possibly to our customers. It should also help us with being more efficient and productive, meaning our users. Nothing's worse than getting a denial service attack or causing a server to go down that you know, happens to be your email server. And now you've got everybody in the company not able to be productive or efficient because of the fact that a service is down. They can't email their customers. They can't respond to anybody. Customer and user satisfaction. I guarantee back in 2014, Target did not have a good user or consumer satisfaction. And that kind of goes back to reputation as well. Not just in protecting of data, but again, if I'm, if I'm your attacker and I'm causing your systems to slow down, of course, let me ask, I always ask this question too of my students is when things go really slow, what do your users, users perceive that technology solution to be? It's a piece of crap. Yeah. So if the email server is running slow because someone's attacking it, they're using it as a blind relay to send out spam to a bazillion people about winning, winning the lottery, then satisfaction goes way down. We also, I talked about being proactive. To me, this is the biggest issue for you, uh, or at least the biggest reason for incident management. I am much more comfortable and much more confident when I'm being proactive than I am being reactive. Yep, I'm aware of that situation. We're already on it. When I get that phone call, I want to be notified. When I get a phone call from somebody, my boss, saying, hey, did you know this is going on? Yep, we're already on it. That sounds much better than what? Email slow. Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on? No, I'm going to be proactive. When I see things start to happen, for example, maybe our hardware is starting to get to the stage where it's aging out. I can go to somebody and say, hey, look, there's this new issue out there that's attacking everybody. And I know that we may not think that we're going to be attacked by it, but it does create a vulnerability for us. We need to upgrade the latest iOS on our routers. Plus, being proactive is actually better for you as far as handling situations, again, than it is to be reactive. Sometimes you can't help but being reactive, especially in the cases of zero-day attacks. But if you have incident management procedures in place, it will help you to be proactive.